Hello, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I want to explain you uh, what Y plus is and then I will answer your questions. Actually, Y plus is an important parameter to be considered in any CFT simulation for good results. Here is a formula for Y plus and related terms. Friction velocity formula, while shear stress formula and correlation to find out the skin friction coefficients. Y plus is a non-dimensional length scale that is normalized using wall shear stress. It is a result of dimensional analysis to provide self-similar solutions to the turbulent boundary layer profile. The turbulent boundary layer consists of three layers, viscous sublayer, logarithmic region, and the buffer region. When in different relations are observed uh, between the average velocity and uh, this non-dimensional distance y plus. Actually, y plus helps somewhat identify where these regions lie in the flow domain. Uh, it also helps in modeling the wall layer, the viscous sublayer. In a viscous layer, the fluid is dominated by the viscous effect, so it can be assumed that the Reynolds shear stress is negligible. The linear velocity law is given by the uh, formula here, or u plus uh, equal to y plus, I mean. The logarithmic area. Actually, in the logarithmic layer, turbulence uh, stress dominate the uh, uh, flow and velocity profile varies uh, very slowly with the logarithmic function along the distance y. Uh, formula here describes this uh, region with the current constant k of uh, 0 0.41 and the constant uh, b equal to 5.2. And about the buffer layer, actually the buffer layer is the transition region between the viscosity dominated region and turbulence dominated part of the flow. Uh, actually viscous and uh, turbulent stresses are of similar magnitude and since uh, it is complex, the velocity profile is not well defined and the original wall functions avoid the first cell center located in this region. I see that people around are willingly following some guidelines uh, which are not applicable for their cases and uh, they end up with problems in solution convergence and accuracy etc. For example, if one situation is applicable for some cases but may not be on the cases he or she is solving. For example, if you are solving the flow over the blunt body, then in this case a major drag is coming from pressure rather than the skin friction or boundary layer. So fine tuning boundary layer uh, mesh uh, won't give you uh, much advantage. 2. For very high Reynolds number flows where boundary layer becomes uh, very thin and effects of it are not important. Example 3. For high Mach number flow, consequently Reynolds number is also very high. Again, boundary layer is thin and results are dependent on shock wave resolution rather than boundary layer resolution. 4. Flow with no separation and still you are trying with y plus of order 1 or less. In this case, you are increasing round of error. This will be counterproductive as you are not understanding flow physics. 5. When you are interested in drag coefficient and still you are trying for high resolution in boundary layer. In this case, you are not getting uh, much advantage as the flow parameters you are interested uh, are not dependent on boundary layer flow, but rather flow physics outside the boundary layer. For example, lift coefficient. In the near wall region, the solution gradients are very high but accurate calculations uh, in the near wall region are paramount uh, to the success of the simulation. The choice is between using wall functions and resolving the viscous sublayer. Wall functions utilize the predictable dimensionless boundary layer profile uh, to allow conditions at the wall to be determined by uh, when the centroid of the wall adjacent mesh cell is located in the like layer. 
To locate the first cell in the like layer, it should typically have a y plus value such that uh, y plus between 30 and 300. This is a very general guideline. For very high rain loads, y plus can be higher if it's still in log layer and for very low but still turbulent rainals, the log layer may not extend uh, far enough away from the wall for the use of wall functions and to be valid and wall functions should never be used if y plus is smaller than 30. Generally speaking, uh, this is the approach if you are more interested in the mixing in the middle of the domain rather than the uh, forces on the wall. First grid cell needs to be at about y plus equal to 1 and a prism layer mesh with growth thread no higher than uh, 1.2 should be used. These are not magic numbers, but this guideline ensures the mesh will be able to elegantly resolve gradients uh, in the sublayer. This will add significantly to the mesh count. Generally speaking, if the forces or heat transfer on the wall are k to your simulation, aerodynamic drag, turbo machinery, blade performance, heat transfer, uh, this is the approach you will take and the recommended turbulence model for most cases is SSDK Omega. Fewer nodes are needed normal to the wall when logarithmic based wall functions are used compared uh, to resolving the viscous sublayer with a mesh. During the pre-processing stage, you will need to know a suitable size for the first layer of grid cells, inflation layer I mean, so that Y plus is in the desired range. The actual flow field won't be known until you have computed the solution and uh, indeed it is sometimes unavoidable uh, to have to go back and remesh your model on account of the computed Y plus values. Summary Turbulence Modeling Guidelines To perform a turbulent flow calculation in Fluent Calculate the Reynolds number and determine whether flow is turbulent Decide on a near wall modeling strategy The choices are Resolve the viscous sublayer or use wall functions Create the mesh with Y plus suitable for the selected approach Choose turbulence model and near wall treatment if necessary in the viscous models panel. Realizable K epsilon or SSDK omega are recommended choices for standard cases. SSDK omega is preferred for cases where the viscous sublayer needs to be resolved a uh, flow separation uh, detailed heat transfer. And finally, set reasonable boundary conditions for the turbulence model variables. Now, I want to explain you how to determine the distance of the first cell to the wall so that the Y plus range reaches the right number after solving the flow. To do this, uh, you can count on some websites uh, like um, point wise. You enter the flow specifications and select the desired Y plus for your turbulence model, and then you are given uh, the right value. Uh, for the first uh, cell height. Then you have to enter this number in the inflation section uh, as a first layer of thickness uh, to create a boundary layer uh, in ANSYS machine software. It is important um, that uh, this value is selected around the um, actually same number and that the site has shown you but if it is a little bigger there is no problem sometimes um, it is necessary to choose a larger one to lower the computational cost but uh, be sure to check that the y plus number is within the correct range after solving the flow
to benefit from Mr. CFT services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at sign mr-cft.com, www.mr-cft.com.